Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Thursday, September 10th, 2009. This morning I'm going to walk through the download and installation of VisualWorks Non-Commercial. Object Studio is a lot simpler because we have a nice Windows installer that solves all of the little problems for you. With VisualWorks things are a little trickier, at least in this release. It's going to get better with the installer that will come out in the fall, but I wanted to walk through some things that might trip you up now. If you go to our website, you go to this download link right here at the top, hit that, it'll take you to this page. Now it'll offer to register you, and this is something that if you have a slow internet connection or if you'd like to contact CENTCOM, this is worth filling out. Notice one of the options is send small talk media to you by mail. If you fill the whole form out and include contact information, we'll be happy to drop a CD in the mail for you, and that'll make the installation go a lot more smoothly, especially if you have a slow internet connection. If you want to download though, just follow the link here and it'll take you to this page of options. The net installer will tr start the installation over the internet. The CD-based installer will download an ISO file, which you would then burn to CD or just mount, assuming you had tools like that. I'm on a Mac here, so it'll just mount it for me. If I'm on Windows, there are various tools that'll do this, likewise on Linux. So what I'm going to do is start the download of the installer. I'm gonna leave individual files alone, partly because you get to a list of stuff here, individual files which are compressed, this works fine if you really know what you're doing, if you've downloaded the product before and you're very familiar with it. If you're not, you're better off going either with the network installer or the CD-based installer. I'm going to go here, download the entire ISO file. This is for Object Studio 8. If you're on Windows, again, nice installer, works beautifully, solves all your problems. This is the one I want to walk through because it gives you a little bit of grief in a couple of places. I'm going to say OK to this download option to save the file. Then I'm going to pause this because it's going to take a few minutes to download the 500 and some odd megabytes. Once I've got the finder up, I'm going to double click on this and it'll bring up the ISO mounted here. And at this point, having it up, I can do various installations. This one is not the one I want. This is for OS 9, which we are not going to be supporting in the next release, so I'm going to ignore that. This you would run if you're on Windows. Over here, you'd install this if you're on Unix or Linux. Here's the one I want for Mac. I'm going to double click this. Now you're going to get this because it's going to warn me that I've downloaded this from the internet. I'm going to ignore that as I typically do with things I download from trusted sites. And it's going to bring up the installer. Now here's where a couple of things happen that you're going to have to pay attention to. Most of the time you want to do typical install. When I do this, it's going to take me to a list of components that's pre-decided that I probably want. If you want to customize, for instance, if I'm doing this on a machine on which I run say Windows under either Parallels or VMware and I know I want the COM Connect because I want to be able to work with COM components. Then I want to go back, I want to go to Custom Install, I want to hit Next, and I want to hit Next here, hit Next here. A lot of choices I would prefer not to have to make. This is what typical install would do for me. And at this point it's going to give me a list of components. I can either select all in this list, select none, and pick by hand. What I'm going to do is just go with the defaults where I would have gone with typical install, come here, because I want to show you something about how this works out. And we're going to hit next and start the install. Before it starts, since we're in the non-commercial, I have to accept the license. So I'll hit that and hit install. And it'll start plowing through and putting things on my hard drive for me. Once you finish the install, this dialog is going to pop up and tell you there are actions you may or may not have to do. What this typically means is that if you're on a Unix platform or a Mac or Windows, you have to set up a working directory structure because it's installed the stuff into the applications area either on Linux or Windows or Mac as appropriate and you have to set up a working directory structure, documents and settings on Windows, documents on Mac, your home directory on Linux or Unix. So that's what it's telling you here. I'm going to ignore that for the moment and just exit out of this and I'm going to push this finder aside and we're going to go to the applications folder where I've installed this and I'm going to point out a couple of things here. If we go to bin and we go to Mac X, and you notice that I don't have anything other than Mac X and Mac X 11 installed. If I had wanted other platform support, for instance, again, if I were running VMware Fusion or if I were running Parallels, I would want to go through the custom install and pick those VMs. As it stands, it's only installing what I need for this particular platform. Now on Mac, I can just double click on the VM. Other platforms, you'd want to set up a command line startup or you want to set up a Windows shortcut, which actually the installer will do for you on Windows, or you want to drag the image and drop it on the VM. So here I'm just going to double click on the VM, and it's going to prompt me for an image to run with this, which again is Mac specific. So it's going to find the install directory here. I'm going to pick visualnc.im, hit open, and it's going to bring up the image for me. Now, the thing I wanted to point out 
is if I go to System Parcel Manager, and I've gone through other screencasts where I've shown you the things that you probably want to load. Let's go to Parcel Manager, and let's say again, I wanted to load ComConnect, say. Notice the question mark here. This is because I went through the typical install, and the typical install of ComConnect doesn't come in, nor does .NET Connect or a few other things. If I wanted that, I would have to install this somehow. I could either go back to the website and install the individual component, or more simply, let's just leave this running while I do this, I can go back to the installer. I'll double click this again, and I'm going to hit open. And at this point, instead of typical, I'm going to go to custom and hit next. And I can just go next through a bunch of these because it's already going to put this in the appropriate spot for me. I'm going to select none. Notice all for this platform are all. I'm going to select none. And then select the thing I really want, which is ComConnect. And then hit next, next. Accept the agreement again and hit install. And it'll then pop that one component that I really needed onto the system for me. And I could have selected multiple others. Let's just exit out of this. Now, pushing this aside, we'll go to the Parcel Manager again, System, Parcel Manager. And if I go to OS Windows, you notice that COM All is now selected with a comment there. So if you forgot to install something or you later found out, oh, I really wanted that and I didn't install it the first time, you can just go back to the installer, pick Custom, select the component you want, have it drop it into the right location for you. So if you come into the Parcel Manager and you see this kind of notation, what that means is that when you installed, you chose either implicitly or explicitly not to install that. More than likely, it was an implicit choice because you probably just went with typical, let the system make all the choices for you, and you didn't get that component. You can always adjust that by going back to the installer, selecting custom, and picking those components by hand. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.